Slavery is a system of forced labor that has existed throughout the world for thousands of years. In America, slavery began in the 17th century when people in Africa were overpowered and forced to leave their native land, their culture, and their families behind. Europeans uh, and others did not simply march into Africa and just take people off. I mean, there were battles, there were wars that were, were lost, you know, by the British, by the French, by the Portuguese, as well as those which were won. You had um, males and females leading forces against the enslavers. Europeans responded by coercing one tribe to enslave another, threatening to arm their enemies with terrifying new weapons if they did not cooperate. These tribal slave traders selected strong, healthy males and females between the ages of 18 and 35, although children were often captured as well. The African captives were chained together at the ankle or wrist, or linked at the neck by a wooden yoke. Once bound, the captives embarked on a grueling march, sometimes as long as 600 miles to the coast where European ships awaited them. Many perished from the rigors of the trip. Others resisted their captors and were killed. The Atlantic crossing took from four to eight weeks. Men, women, and children were crowded into tightly packed quarters. The ordeal was so demoralizing that the Africans often sank into a deep depression. Some chose death rather than to endure the degradation. By 1860, there would be four million African slaves in the United States. This enormous population of slaves was owned by a small group of the wealthiest and most powerful whites in American society. As African slaves toiled in the fields, laws were created to enforce their low status. They were prohibited from participating in lawsuits from owning property or firearms, and from possessing alcohol. Most states did not recognize slave marriages and often prohibited slaves from learning to read and write. The treatment slaves received from their masters varied tremendously. Some owners were brutal sadists who worked their slaves mercilessly and threatened them with corporal discipline so painful that it amounted to torture. Many men and women known as abolitionists worked unceasingly to end slavery. They viewed slavery as immoral and unchristian and could not comprehend how Americans, steeped in the tenets of the Declaration of Independence, could sanction the enslavement of human beings. Many former slaves, like Sojourner Truth, supported the abolitionist movement. She traveled widely, speaking for both racial and gender causes. William Lloyd Garrison, who published The Liberator, the leading anti-slavery newspaper of the day. Frederick Douglass, another towering figure in the anti-slavery movement, was born a Maryland slave in about 1817. Escaping to the North, he became an agent of the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society and a tireless orator for black freedom. In 1847, Douglas founded an abolitionist newspaper, the North Star. Many slaves escaped to freedom along a series of trails known as the Underground Railroad. The railroad was a loose network of people willing to hide runaway slaves in their homes and conduct them to the next station. The Underground Railroad was also aided by northern abolitionist organizations such as the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee, who gave supplies and helped conduct slaves to freedom. The most famous guide on the Underground Railroad was Harriet Tubman. Having escaped from a Maryland plantation in 1849, she became familiar with the roads, hiding places, and depots that were used to conduct runaways to freedom in the North. Harriet Tubman was a brave, courageous, wise, and kind person. Not only did she 
concern herself about her liberty, but she concerned herself about people of all races. As you know, one reason why the Underground Railroad is so popular among people throughout the world is that people of all races, creeds, and colors came together. Abraham Lincoln was elected the 16th president of the United States. He opposed the expansion of slavery and his victory threw the South into revolt. By March of 1861, seven states, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas had seceded from the Union to form a coalition they called the Confederate States of America. The Civil War began one month later when Confederate gunfire sounded over the federal stronghold of Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Lincoln responded by issuing a call for 75,000 volunteers to man the Union Army. The abolitionists presented the president with two demands, the right of freed blacks to fight with the Union Army and the emancipation of the slaves. Eventually, Lincoln acceded to both demands. Nearly 185,000 blacks fought valiantly during the Civil War, and about 38,000 of them gave their lives to the Union's cause. In December 1862, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, abolishing slavery. The war's end in April 1865 brought freedom to nearly four million slaves. Freedmen, as both males and females were called, celebrated throughout the South on plantations or at crossroads between them. In December 1865, Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, guaranteeing the hard-won freedom of African slaves. It stated, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. Emancipation throughout the South was followed by a period of intense confusion in which blacks made the dramatic transition from slavery to citizenship. One of the things that I think uh, young people today should be aware of is the range of extremely important contributions that African Americans have made uh, to American society over the years and that they've been able to make these contributions in the face of uh, overwhelming odds. Uh, they have fought for rights which had been denied them uh, and which we now have available to us and which quite often, uh, quite frequently, uh, we abuse, we don't take full advantage of. The Civil War destroyed the institution of slavery but it did not end the racism of white Southerners who wanted their former slaves to retain their inferior status. Discrimination against Americans of African descent would continue. Like Tubman and Douglas before them, new leaders would be called forward by African Americans to guide their fight for freedom. <laughs> 